But what do you mean the song that destroyed its creator's life? Like, there was... A discourse? You guys don't like that song? To be honest, to be honest, at the start, I hated the song too. At the start, I hated that fucking song too. But it kind of grew on me. People were so offended by how I looked. Sometimes I just want to tell myself I copied as much as anyone else, and I'm not the new Nickelback. It's the world's what? most streamed song by a female artist, but Dance Monkey's three billion plays ruined Tones and I's life. I don't think I've been happy in one day since all this stuff has happened. Not to mention the song itself is way more depressing than most people realize. You see, Tones and I first wrote Dance Monkey whilst performing her songs in the street, where on one particular night she dealt with a super difficult crowd. The whole crowd was very drunk and, and wait, rowdy. Wait, wait, what happened? Super difficult performing her songs in the street, where on one particular night she dealt with a super difficult crowd. The whole crowd was very drunk and, and rowdy. Over a 30 minute okay. period, Tones had all her money stolen, was told by an onlooker she had no talent, and had her keyboards knocked over, as the rest of the crowd so demanded the she fuck? keep on playing. I had like a real bad night where like people were just like, again, 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 like they weren't even doing, chanting one more song. I'd done like six encores. She'd therefore make the chorus dance for me dance for me, dance for me, referring to hecklers egging her on. I just took everything that people had said to me and put it in a song like, just sing one more time, one more time. And by the time she finally wrote it, her confidence had been destroyed. And I wrote Damn. it in the um, wardrobe because I still got nervous about people listening and hearing me stuff up when I'm writing music and go over and over again on the same thing. So I like really nestle myself in a small space. However, by playing the song on the street, she attracted an audience of hundreds, all of whom couldn't stop listening despite the song being unreleased. You couldn't hear the song anywhere, it was nowhere, you could only hear it live and that's the only place you could hear it and word started getting right. around about this song with no way to stream it. People would come down when I was busking just to hear it. In one video titled Tones and I NYE in Byron Bay, the uploader stated don't know the name of the song but I got a big fan of her for the first go with the video itself showing hundreds of people listening to Tones, one of whom you can hear yelling coolest night of hey, my life. Don't, don't, a different don't, don't, TikTok TikTok showed a similar scene, having filmed Dance Monkey on the street before its release, captioned with the title, I just recorded it because I thought the song was good. Okay. Dance Monkey made her street performances so popular, Tone's manager stated by the end of the first song at least 20 would stop by, by the end of the third there was at least 50, and by the end of the set 150 would be gathered. We were getting shut down by the police in a few weeks, the crowds were oh, spilling onto the street and becoming dangerous, with her local fame causing other unrelated issues. Issues. Other buskers started getting angry at me. Some started a Facebook group and were like, we're going to run Why? Tones out of town. Like, for no reason. They just hated how big the crowds were getting. As a result, yeah. Tones took her act to a hostel where it became even them. bigger. Everyone just started coming to the hostel and all of a sudden, this hostel was at full capacity. 500 people, they couldn't let anyone in every single week. Just because people wanted to come, waited through the whole two and a half hour talent show for this one song at the end, which was like the craziest thing. Everyone knew all the words. Describing that period as her happiest days ever. I always say that that was easily the best time in my life. She'd achieved everything she ever wanted and still had no plans to release music publicly. Always obviously just wanted to be a busker. I never anticipated even releasing music. But having gained 14,000 followers from busking, Tone spent $800 to record and release Dance Monkey. As one of her okay. first official songs, she had no expectations. I didn't even think I'd get played on radio in Australia. Although the outcome turned turned out to be the opposite. The, the success Tones found here. locally was repeated on the radio. Pretty much when I released it, we saw the yeah, same Germany thing happen, the but radio. in a way bigger scale. That what had already been happening for eight months on the street. Topping charts in Australia just 30 days after Dance Monkey's release. Two weeks after hitting number one, Tones released the music video, which gained 1.6 million views in just over a month, leading to her first festival invite, which slightly exceeded expectations. Tones was scheduled as the first act on a terrible stage. I opened the whole festival and usually there's about
about 200 people at this stage. Although as can be seen by the official festival video, she managed to attract a slightly larger audience. There was like 40,000 people. The video of me online at Splendour in the Grass with the red on is that. The set after me had like 500 people there. The music video hit 10 million views only one month later, celebrated with an Instagram post reading, okay. Old Town Road has been number one on iTunes for 14 weeks. Until now, motherfuckers. One month after Ew. this, when the video was at 100 was million views, Tones made another post reading, I have the number one most streamed song on Spotify worldwide at the moment, and an Aussie artist has never done that before. And then it stayed on this top of Spotify for like a record breaking amount of time, it, it bet all the Shazam records. Before becoming the highest stream song ever by a female artist on Spotify. Wow. Tones and I had achieved what her biggest idols couldn't. Beyonce hasn't done that. Ariana Grande hasn't done that. Nicki Minaj and Taylor Swift, they've never done what that song has done. And while wow. Tones maintained that she loved the song, this is where the problem started. And I love the song so much, people think I hate it. It just defines me and I need that to stop. That one song that I wrote when I was on the street should not define the rest of my life. As mentioned, the song became so popular it was all that she was known for. If she played the song first at festivals, people would simply leave. Sometimes when I go overseas, I have to end on that song because if I do Dance Monkey Second Lars, everyone's going to the other stage and I'm sitting here playing Flyway to my friends. But if she played the song at the end, people wouldn't stop demanding it. There was one festival I went and played and in between like every that. song, they were like, dance monkey, dance, which is like kind of like crippling as an artist. Rolling Stone added to this by writing, during her first festival appearance at New Zealand's Bay Dreams, a section of the crowd chanted dance monkey, dance monkey over and over, unwittingly feeding into the exact narrative the song was about. During the same article, Tones and I stated, this dance monkey thing is like a blessing and a curse. It's opened me up to so many more fans and to have so many people discover my music, but I don't want to be known for that until I die. It was one song I wrote, she says wearily. It's not even near my favourite song. It's not even in my top three or maybe not even top five. And her view was likely tainted by the song's other problems. Tones explained her clothing style. I mean, that's... I get where she's coming from, that she doesn't want to be known for that one. But in the end, music is a product for people to consume and so the consumers decide what's going to make it popular uh. oh yeah sorry so you can't really be upset with that either exactly you don't get what you don't get to pick what you're known for it's simple as that like i get where she's coming from i get where she's coming from totally but unfortunately, she just doesn't get to decide what she is gonna be known for. 7 out of 10, but only? Not even an 8? Man. Well, had come from a lack of confidence. Chubby, hat wearing, oversized tee. I felt comfortable in those baggy clothes. I wasn't body confident. Which turned into a point of criticism as she became a public figure. People were so offended by how I looked. Like, just so offended. And I judged myself as harsh as I could so that I was really prepared. And then. I find it so ridiculous. I find it so ridiculous when people judge a musician off of their looks. I don't care what a musician looks like. I care about the music they make. Holy shit, why do we need to judge musicians by their looks? What the fuck? Hi, bloody I. It's just known for burping, she didn't pick that. <laughs> And it wasn't a tactic anymore, I just started hating myself. Comments about her appearance at the time were too vile to publish even in Rolling Stone. And when given a chance to respond, Tone stated, I promise you everything that you say, I feel about myself now. I promise you that I feel like shit all the time. So leave me alone now because there's nothing more you can do. This mind frame stained everything that she did. Oh, the culture maybe, yeah. Now, yes.
I could not connect or enjoy the moment because there was this big, you're ugly, you're gross. Doesn't matter what you do, this is offensive. Reducing her desire to be on social media. I really don't want to be out there in the world like that. Instead posting text images such as, Last time I checked, you didn't need to be pretty to write a good song. And it will be a cold day in hell when I join the club of women that have only gotten somewhere because of what they look like. Thanks. Tones repelled the haters with a genius coping strategy. Then I just like turn my phone off and hang out with my friends and it's all fine. But for the hate toward the song itself, there was easily 10 times more. The worst thing about it is the, the, the vocals, the goddamn vocals. They're terrible. They are awful. The criticism what? began with her voice. I never ever once thought my voice was different or anything like that. Now the world is telling me that it's different. While others accused her of using effects to achieve a specific sound. Everyone seems to think your voice is super weird. A lot of people at the start thought that it was an edit. Articles such as this one had to clarify her voice was natural, although even then the song was building an army of haters. Dance Monkey by Tones and I is a terrible song. As I said, the first few times I heard the song, I didn't like it. I didn't like the song at all, but it really did grow on me. Like, do you know when sometimes there are literally our songs at the, at the start you don't like, but they actually grow on you and they actually become a fucking bop? That's that kind of song. Nah. The song Dance Monkey is fucking atrocious. Dance Monkey is the worst song in history, and I will never forgive humanity for making <laughs> it popular. I will never forgive humanity for making it popular. Yeah, that's what's important here. That's what uh, what's important here. You never heard it? I'll go say, Dance Monkey, Dance Monkey, Dance Monkey. Uh oh. <laughs> Even Jenna Ortega slammed the song by adding, If anyone ever played that in my house, they're instantly being kicked out, <laughs> while Tone's live performance on Australian radio achieved a pretty depressing record. I am the only like a version in the history of Triple J like a versions that have had to have the comments turned off. Was it hated simply because it was overplayed? People say, oh, I used to like the song, and then it got so overplayed. It's, not, it's always on radio. Overplayed. That is true. It get, they get so overplayed, but that's all popular songs. That is all popular songs. There was a time where I couldn't fucking listen to The Shape of You from Ed Sheeran anymore. Jesus. I can't escape it. Whatever the reason, it was making Tone's life hell. I didn't like myself at all. I preempted hate. I would just see myself through the most hateful haters eyes. In the process, Tones had to deal with a stalker. I got probably a message like every three minutes, Stalker. sent presents to people that know me, messaged my random friends that they've never met. Ah. This person lived overseas and left and went home and then said they're coming back for me and actually came back. Although what surprisingly, Nicki Minaj might have been a bigger problem. Wait, you what? see, Dance Monkey had been topping the charts for almost half a year, at which do? point Nicki Minaj released a new song, telling her followers to do whatever you can to get it to number one. Well, rather than, you know, listening Wait, what? her followers to, to do whatever you year, at which point Nicki Minaj released a new song, telling her followers to do whatever you can to get it to number one. Well, rather than, you know, uh, listening to Nicki's song, her fans instead tore down Tones and I in a pretty lousy way. They put, like, racist signs or swastikas stickers everywhere over my what? stuff and then reposted it on Twitter. Pushing Tones toward her what? breaking point. She described her haters to be beating me over and over again until I'm sitting here crying in my own home. No People one even understands city. how bad it really is. Winning four Arias failed to fix anything. No one could have ever prepared me for the whole world judging me and comparing you to other artists. Which was followed by a Facebook post reading. People always say, Tones, how does it feel? It must feel great. What are you feeling? You must be over the moon. It does, and I don't want to take anything away, but I have been hiding a black hole for a while now. With success comes judgment and opinions. This I was prepared for. It's normal, which is sickening, but the relationship endless bullying that follows every proud moment tears my mind in two. Tones was also frustrated by- Right? To one point I wanna say, um, of course, you gotta be prepared for a lot of backlash if you post anything to the world to see. On the other hand, she didn't even- Like, it took her such a long time and for people to demand it for her to even post anything on Spotify. 
she didn't even want to do it at first. And then she just kind of gave in to the people and she said, as she just said here in the quote, she thought she was prepared for it, but to this amount that people go to this length? That is ridiculous. Those are probably the same kind of people that do support the current trending thing, man. By the media. And I feel like dirty when people made shit up about me and I mm. felt gross, like they could say anything and they did. To the extent that she was happy to see the song's popularity fading. Here comes the weekend with blinding lights. I'm like, good on ya, mate. <laughs> Marietta's is like, oh, it might go back to number one next week. I'm like, oh no, I want to move on with my life. It's therefore no surprise she'd state, I don't want to just try to chase that song. I loathe that song a lot of the time. A lot of times I don't want to sing it. Instead, turning lemons into lemonade with an album called Madhouse, documenting the highs and lows of unexpected fame. The whole ordeal also inspired a weight loss journey. Here's an exclusive, I've actually just lost 30 kilos. Leading to positive articles for the first time in a long time. Tones therefore also added this. After experiencing maybe the biggest high and the biggest low, the highs do outweigh the lows and now I'm in a place where I see a lot more love. And now owns the fact that she simply made an awesome song. I'm so thankful for that song and I'm so proud of that song and I'll never not be. 